another episode of Full Disclosure brought to you by InfinityExist.com. I am Knox, and this is Patch, and today we're going to be showing you local password cracking. Um, now, not only does local password cracking allow you to get the password for the computer that you're on, I mean, that's obvious, but there's lots of other things you can do with that password. For instance, if you're on a large network where they may be used ghost images to set up all the computers, that password could have been used on all those computers. Uh, also, a lot of times, uh, people will just reuse that password, so you're going to have that password as a reference if you're trying to crack into other things. Now, also today, we're not only going to show you just how to crack, we're also going to show you how to reset and restore passwords. Um, there's different trade-offs to either one. I mean, obviously, knowing the password is helpful, but sometimes the password is going to be too large to crack or just take too long. So that way you can just take that password out of there to give you access to that local machine and then you can restore it. Uh, now Patch is going to show us uh, what we're going to be doing today. Uh, we're going to use Backtrack 2 to reset and restore uh, passwords in Linux and Windows and we're also going to use it to crack both passwords on both operating systems. And then at the end we're also going to show you uh, some other programs you can use to crack Windows back passwords. Alright, let's get into it. We're going to start off by resetting and restoring the password on a Linux computer using Ubuntu. Um, as you see here, we just typed in a whole bunch of garbage in. Uh, obviously, we're not going to get in. So, we're going to restart the computer and put in Backtrack and tell it to boot from CD and just load it up. Alright, once it's loaded up, you're going to want to open up the terminal. and just type in mount to show you all the mounted devices and Backtrack should automatically mount it since it's a Linux format it's going to mount it as read and write so we can leave that mount how it is um, but we're going to want to navigate to that mounted drive which is in mount and then whatever device it is and then we're going to go into the ETC folder which contains all the pa password information and it contains the, the password file which holds the username in some cases, the user hash and other information. Um, the problem is that file is, is uh, world readable, which means anybody can access it and read it. Um, so, to add extra layer of security, they um, create this thing called shadowing the password, which basically creates another file called the shadow, which takes the password hash from the password file and replaces it with an X or an asterisk, and then puts the password hash in another file, which is only readable by root. So this adds an extra layer of security, so not every user can go in and just look at the password hashes. And also, since the password file is still there, it allows normal programs to function correctly. As you can see, that the password was removed, the password hash was removed and replaced by an X, which informs the, the operating system that the password file is shadowed. So, to be able to read to be able to get the password hash, you're going to have to go to the shadow file. And since we're in a, a debug mode, we're, we're, we're viewing the hard drive with Backtrack, so we, we can read this file. Alright, first we're going to show you how to reset or change the password, and then that will allow us to log into the whatever username you want to, and then do what we need to do, and then get out and then restore the password after we're done. There's a couple methods to do this. The easiest way to do this is to open up the password file and just simply remove that X or asterisk or password hash, whatever's in there. Leave it so it's, that field is blank. This will tell the operating system that there is no password for that user. Um, but however, this will not work with Ubuntu because they require a password. So this will work on other Linux versions, but not for Ubuntu. So we'll just, we'll just leave it the way it is and then we'll show you the second method. All right, the second method is what we're going to do is first make a copy of the shadow file so that way we can restore it after we're done. And then what we want to do is unmount that hard drive so that we can remount it to another directory. I'm just going to make another directory called Ubuntu and then unmount the device and then remount it to the Ubuntu directory. All 
All right, after we, we've remounted to the Ubuntu folder, we can change the root of Backtrack 2 to be the Ubuntu folder. And then after that's done, we can use the password command to change the password of any user. And I'll just type in password and then patchy to change that username. And that, after that's done, you, all you have to do is uh, exit and reboot the computer. All right, we're back on the Ubuntu machine. And we'll just type in the username and the password we changed it to. And there you go. We're in. Um, all right, now I'm just going to open up a terminal and, ch and uh, log into roots with the same password. And show you that when you're on the system, only a root user can, can view the, the shadow file. And then I'm just going to exit out of root and try to I'll put the contents of Shadow again, and it gives me a per permission denied, so... Uh. Alright, now we're going to just reset Ubuntu, and we're going to move back into Backtrack 2 and show you how to restore the password. Just navigate to the same directory again, then go to etc, and then... And use the move command to replace the current shadow with our backed up shadow. That will basically restore the old password. Alright, well that's basically it for uh, resetting Linux passwords. Let's, uh, next we're going to show you how to crack Linux passwords. And it's, it's pretty simple. Um, we're going to use Backtrack again. So you can just go to the, the pen test, password, John folder, and uh, this is the directory for the John the Ripper program, which is a program that can crack multiple hashes. But first we're going to use unshadow to take the password hashes from the shadow file and put it back into the password file. Uh, you can do this manually, but it's easier just to use the program. And then we're just going to output the output into a temporary password file. And as you can see, uh, that's what the password file would look like if it wasn't shadowed. Then we can just point John to that password file and it'll start cracking the password. By default, John the Ripper does a brute force attack on the hashes, but this could take a while, so we're going to use the word list that comes with Backtrack 2 to do a dictionary attack. In previous episodes, we've already covered what a dictionary attack is, so you should know what's going on here. And you should know that if it's a, a non-dictionary word, this, this attack will not work. To do this, go to the dictionaries folders and backtrack, unzip the word list, then navigate back to the John the Ripper folder, and then type in John dash dash word list equals, and then point it to the word list location. Um, as you can see, we have dot dot slash dot dot. Well, basically, those are directory transversals, which tells John to get that word list from two previous directories, then dictionaries, and then word list. Um, pretty basic stuff. And then you just type where the password hashes are stored, and then just run the attack. And it, if it is a dictionary word, this should take a couple seconds. Alright, there you go, the password's infinity.